Hey there and welcome back. Today we're embarking on an intriguing exploration of Chinese punctuation. Don't worry if you're a beginner, we'll make things both easy and insightful. We'll kick things off with familiar punctuation marks that function the same in Chinese and English, as well as a couple that you won't find in the Chinese writing system. Then we'll venture into punctuation marks that set Chinese apart. You might recognize some of them at first glance, but they come with their own special meanings and applications that truly set them apart from English. Now, if you're here, I'm going to assume that you're learning to write Chinese. And if that's the case, remember that punctuation marks take up the space of a single character, unless we mention otherwise later in the video. For those of you that prefer writing vertically, here's a tip. It's considered proper to position punctuation marks either below or to the right of the character that comes just before it. Colon. Let's start things off with the colon. Both English and Chinese use colons similarly. Colons are used to introduce lists or examples, introduce explanations or clarifications, introduce quotations, title and subtitle separation, when stating a book of the Bible and its verse, and more. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. She answered enthusiastically, Yes, I will marry you. Psalms 83.18 Exclamation mark Exclamation marks are used to indicate a sudden cry or to express very strong feelings such as anger, surprise, or pain. They can indicate that the speaker is shouting or using an expletive or swear word. Here's an example. I won the auction. 我赢了拍卖. Parentheses. 括号. Just as in English, a word, clause, or phrase is inserted into round brackets as an explanation or afterthought of a passage. The passage would not be grammatically correct without it. Take a look at this example. She finally replied, after taking a moment to think, that she didn't want to marry him. Quotation marks. Question marks can indicate that a question is being asked to express doubt or uncertainty about something or to ask a rhetorical question in which no answer is required. Here's an example of each type of question I just mentioned. Where is the restroom? You're a vegetarian, right? Who cares? Semicolon. Semicolons are used to indicate a pause, typically between two main clauses that have no conjunction between them. The pause is more pronounced than that indicated by a comma. Here are two examples. Call me tomorrow. You can give me an answer then. Art has two sources. One is ideal. The second is fantasy. Apostrophe. There is no equivalent of the apostrophe in Chinese. So, when writing English names such as O'Connor, the apostrophe is omitted in Chinese translation. Okay, so now you're thinking, but haven't I seen them in pinyin? Yes, you have. For example, the Chinese word Xi'an is properly written in pinyin with an apostrophe. Remember, pinyin is a pronunciation system, not Chinese writing. In our example, the apostrophe indicates a slight pause or separation between the syllables to help clarify the pronunciation of the word. Hyphen. 连字号. 
Unlike English that uses hyphens often in compound words, the hyphen is not used in Chinese. The only time you will see it make an appearance in Chinese is when a foreign name containing a hyphen is translated. Also, be sure not to confuse a hyphen with a dash. Although they look a bit similar, they are two distinct punctuation marks. We'll talk about dashes a little later on in this video. Now, let's move on to punctuation marks that are unique to Chinese or have a specific usage in Chinese that differs from its use in the West. Comma, doha. So now you're thinking, hey, wait a minute, we have commas in English. Yes, you're right, and there is some similarity in its usage. Just as in English, Chinese uses commas to show pauses or separate clauses within a sentence. For example, if it's sunny tomorrow, I will go to the park. Although in English we use commas to enumerate lists, it's improper to do so in Chinese. Enumeration comma. 顿号. Yes, folks, Chinese has a unique comma for separating words that appear in lists. It functions the same as the comma does in English when enumerating lists. It just looks a bit different. Here's an example of it in use. I love my wife, my daughter, my dog, and my cat. 我爱我的妻子, 我的女儿, 我的狗, if you're enjoying this video, please tap that like button as it truly helps my channel. Dash 破折号. In English, a dash is slightly longer than a hyphen, and one of its functions is to signify ranges. Chinese uses the dash in this way as well. For example, are you dash sure you the Chinese dash is longer than both the hyphen and the dash we discussed moments ago. When writing Chinese, the Chinese dash takes up the space of two characters and is properly placed in the center of the line in which it appears. There should be no break in the line. In English, the Chinese dash is called the 2M dash. It's used to indicate a pause or interruption in a sentence. It can also be used to emphasize or set off information within a sentence. Here's an example. I'm going to Beijing, the capital of China. 我准备去北京, 中国的首都. Ellipsis. 省略号. The usage of the ellipsis in Chinese and English is the same. So why is it in this list? Well, because it looks different than it does in the West. In English writing, an ellipsis consists of three dots that appear at the bottom of a line. Chinese uses six dots that appear in the middle of the line. When writing, it takes up the space of two Chinese characters. Generally speaking, an ellipsis is used to indicate an omission of a word or words that are deemed unnecessary or able to be understood from the context. Here's an example. I stopped believing in Santa Claus when he asked for my autograph. Shirley Temple. 我不再相信圣诞老人了。当他向我要签名时, The original quote states, I stopped believing in Santa Claus when my mother took me to see him in a department store and he asked for my autograph. So as you can see, the omitted words were unnecessary for the statement to be understood. Just keep in mind that if you're quoting the words of another person, be careful not to change the meaning of the quote by omitting context with an ellipsis. Did you know that omitting words is not the only function of an ellipsis? It can also be used to create a pause for dramatic effect or suspense, or to show a trail off into silence. Here are some examples. Jealousy is rottenness of the bones. 极度是骨头的腐朽. Why don't you? 为什么你不? An ellipsis can also be used to hint that there's more to be said. The best cliffhangers in books use this method. Here's an example. The wind blowing at our backs, we set off. 
。风吹在我们背后，我们出发了。Full stop. 句号。A full stop in Chinese has the same function as the period does in English. The difference is that the Chinese full stop looks like an empty circle instead of the familiar dot. Both in China and in the West, the full stop or period is used at the end of simple and complex sentences. Here are a couple of examples. Please wait. 请等待 My wife loves learning Chinese. 我的妻子喜欢学习中文。Did you notice that the pinyin in the examples use the Western period? Although pinyin is technically Chinese, the Western style period is properly used when writing pinyin. Middle dot. 间隔号。As a student of the Chinese language, you are no doubt aware that Chinese is written without spaces. The middle dot is used as a separator between the first, middle, and last names of foreigners, minorities, and fictional characters with transliterated names. I'm sure you can envision it, but here's an example of its use: Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, Minnie Mouse, Minnie Mouse. Don't you just love Minnie Mouse? Quotation marks. 引号 The quotation marks that you're familiar with in English look and function in exactly the same way when you're writing simplified Chinese horizontally. In other words, in the same manner English is written. Take a look. I am so upset with Mom right now," said my brother. Last week she said to me, "Mark, if you don't clean your room, I'm taking away your Xbox." Yesterday she took it. 我现在很生妈妈的气。我弟弟说，上周他对我说：“马克，如果你不打扫你的房间，我就拿走你的 Xbox。”昨天他真的拿走了。When writing traditional Chinese horizontally, however, square brackets are used in place of quotation marks. Here's how they look. For quotes within quotes, these symbols are used. Here is the example we used moments ago using traditional Chinese and the brackets we just described. Pause the video if you need to take a longer look. What about when Chinese is written vertically? Whether you're writing in simplified or traditional Chinese, use the bracket symbols and rotate them. They should appear like this. Title mark. 书名号 The literal meaning of the Chinese name is bookmark name, which is a real clue as to its usage. Not only book titles, but movie and film titles, the names of magazines and the articles within them, the names of songs and things of a similar nature, are properly placed within title marks. Here's an example. I really enjoyed the drama Faded to Love You. 我非常喜欢《命中注定我爱你》这部电视剧。If you find yourself referencing a title within a title, single-angle brackets are used to set it off. Here's an example of a movie title within the name of a news article. Tom Cruise injured on set of Mission Impossible. Tom Cruise 在《碟中谍》拍摄现场受伤。Now pat yourself on the back. You're now a Chinese punctuation Jedi master. Did you grow up on Star Wars like me? <laughs> well, that's all for this video, and please don't forget to tap that like button before you go. See you next time.